Tips from the ER, trauma shears. Have you ever woken up butt naked in the ER and wondered what the fuck happened to all my clothes? Well, if you've ever been in a traumatic accident and your unconscious body ends up in the ER, we're gonna waste absolutely no time cutting your clothes off with trauma shears. We gotta see what's underneath those clothes to save you. Gunshot wounds, broken bones, hairy nipples, we wanna see it all, motherfuckers. And we're gonna do it using these babies. They can cut through belts, leathers, denims, thin metals, or whatever else you fashion Nova connoisseurs are wearing these days. Specifically designed to cut through clothes and not skin. Because we don't give a damn what you're wearing. If we want it off, we're gonna take it off. <laughs> Tips from the ER. The blood pressure cuff. I know getting a blood pressure can be a little painful around the arm, but we absolutely need one. So try not to be a little bitch about it and embrace the squeeze because the more you freak out, the higher your blood pressure gets. And if we have to redo it, it will squeeze even tighter. The trick is to hold really still and think happy thoughts. Don't be nervous, motherfucker. A blood pressure cuff is like an anaconda. The more you move, the tighter it squeezes. And it don't want none unless you got buns, hon. We also have all types of different size blood pressure cuffs, and it's very important that you get the right size or you won't get an accurate reading. We have small, medium, large, extra large if you're a chunky monkey, all the way down to the itty bitty ones for the newborns. Because no matter who or what comes into the ER, we absolutely will get a fucking blood pressure. So if you'd be so kind, take off the jacket, roll up your sleeves, and show us some skin. It's time to get to squeezing. Tips from the ER, x-rays. Isn't it funny how we tell you x-rays are safe? Then just as we're about to shoot, everyone covers their genitals and runs away, leaving you exposed to radiation all by your lonesome? How does it feel to be lied to? I'm fucking with you. It's really not that much. Radiation from a chest x-ray is equivalent to the amount of radiation you get flying from California to New York three times. You breathe in more radiation just walking around outside. But unlike you, we are exposed to radiation from scans all day long. Of course we're gonna run. And why does it take so long for your scans to be read? I'll tell you why, motherfuckers. Because the person taking your picture isn't the one reading the scan. That is a radiology technician. We have to wait for a radiology doctor to read it. That's right, some poor soul went to school for 13 years just to sit in a dark room and read those grainy black and white blobs of body parts. Then they have to write a report. Then relay that message back to the ER doctor who finally gets to tell you that your arm is indeed broken. Tips from the ER. Hospital monitors. If you've ever been a patient in the hospital, you've likely been hooked up to one of these things. Let's go over what these numbers mean. First number here is your pulse, also known as your heart rate or beats per minute. I like to see anywhere from 65 to 90, but it just depends on the person. If you're super athletic, you work out, or you run marathons, your heart rate could easily sit in the low to mid 50s. I've also seen patients sit in their beds comfortably with a heart rate in the low hundreds. So it just depends on the person. These two little numbers are the parameters we set on the machine. If this big number goes outside of any of these two little numbers, the machine will start to beep. This blue number here is oxygen saturation. It's how much oxygen is circulating through your body. 84 is too low. This person will likely be getting some oxygen. Ideally, we want this number between 95 and 100. Anything in the low 90s or below, you're likely getting some oxygen. This number down here is your respirations, or breaths per minute. 18 is a great number. Ideally, we would want anything between 14 and 18, but again, it just depends on the person. Patients who come into the ER for breathing problems will have this number be a lot higher. This number here is your blood pressure. Textbook says it should be 120 over 80, but again, it just depends on the person. The last time I checked mine, I think I was 125 over 78. This number here is your mean arterial pressure. There's a lot of factors that go into getting this number, but ideally you want anything between 70 to 100. These are just the list of old blood pressures and the times you took them at. And this number here is your temperature. Either they used a probe that was hooked up to this monitor, or they stuck a temperature sensing Foley inside your bladder. Tips from the ER, CT scans. A CT scan is an emergency room's best friend. They're usually located right next to, if not inside the ER, because when we need one, we need it faster than a hungry baby needs a titty. It's a quick way to let us know if you're bleeding out somewhere inside your body, usually because you've just had a stroke or you just got into a car accident looking at that Instagram model story instead of paying attention to the road. She was only drinking coffee, Dave. Was it worth it? 
A CT scan is basically 100 x-rays taken all at once. It's a lot more radiation, but if it'll save your life, that one step closer to cancer might just be worth it, motherfuckers. Before your CT scan, we have this liquid highlighter called Contrast that we inject into your veins to glow up your body so we see every little bit of you, down to your cute little toes. The result is a 3D image of your body sliced up like a loaf of bread. We then get to pick out any slice, take a gander at it, before we let you know whether you're gonna live or possibly die. Nice. Tips from the ER. Saline. It has come to my attention that some of you motherfuckers have no idea what the fuck saline is. So I'm gonna break it down for you. Saline is one of the most common household items in the hospital, right next to gloves, needles, and my will to live. I've about had it with all of you. But saline is just water with a little bit of salt, usually just 0.9%. That's right, motherfuckers, less than 1% of that bitch is salt. The rest is just water. Here in the ER, we use saline to clean out your wounds. It doesn't sting or burn because it's just water with a little bit of salt. Saline can also be used to hydrate you, but through a vein using an IV. It doesn't go into your stomach. Please do not drink salt water. If you're out and about with your friends and you is a thirsty bitch, regular water would do just fine. Tips from the ER. Banana bags. Banana bags are used for patients who can't get their nutrients the old fashioned way by chomping on some salad or swallowing some nuts. It's basically a bag of saline, but with vitamins and minerals. But why is it called a banana bag? Is it because you have to peel it to get to the good stuff? No, it's because it looks bright ass yellow. That's right, motherfuckers. Adding vitamins to a liquid can turn it neon yellow. Why do you think your urine looks neon yellow after you drink a multivitamin? It's because your body can rarely absorb an entire multivitamin. So it comes out in your urine, making your piss look brighter as a banana. Banana bags are also great for hangovers. Nothing like a radioactive looking pouch of piss to replenish your body from all the poisonous liquor you consumed. Trying to convince yourself having kids was a good idea. Tips from the ER. Bedpans. If you come to the ER for an accident that causes you to be unable to get up to the bathroom to take a shit, well then my friend, you're gonna have to take a shit right there in the bed. Using a bedpan. That's right motherfuckers. There's really no need to be shy. It's very common and we actually prefer it. Having to fill out the paperwork for an unstable patient trying to get up and accidentally falling on their face is a fucking nightmare. A bedpan is like a flat plastic bucket made to the shape of your ass. Unfortunately, bedpans are a one size fits all type of situation and you come in all different sizes. There's a couple ways to get this thing under you. If you can lift up your hips, we'll slide the bedpan right under you. If not, we're gonna roll you from side to side like a log until that bedpan is perfectly under your tush. Don't worry about the mess, that's for us to take care of. We'll wipe you down like a newborn baby, throw away the evidence, close the curtains, and pretend like nothing ever happened. Tips from the ER, the suction. One of the most underrated life-saving machines in the hospital, the fucking suction. If you come into the ER unconscious and you start throwing up blood, vomit, saliva, or anything else that comes out of that disgusting mouth of yours, there's one surefire way to make sure you don't choke and die. The fucking suction. That's right, motherfuckers. We'll stick a long hard tube into your mouth that's hooked up to another long soft flaccid tube that's hooked up to a bucket that's hooked up to a vacuum inside the hospital walls that will <laughs> suction all that goodness out of your mouth away from your lungs to make sure you I don't die. I've managed to forget to set up the suction once or twice in my life. And let's just say the team wasn't very happy. Luckily, no one died because sucking isn't the only way to save someone's life. If you see someone on the floor choking, turn them to their side. Keep that fluid from going down their throat and you may just save their life. Tips from the ER, Foley. A Foley is a tube we stick in you when you're having a little trouble getting your pee pee out. It's pretty painful and dangerous not being able to urinate when your bladder's full, but luckily for you, there's a special tube that'll drain that tinkle right out of you. It's called a Foley and it goes in exactly where you think it does, right through the hole where the pee pee comes running out. Once it's in, we blow up a little balloon at the tip of the tube to make sure it doesn't try to snake out of you. So don't pull on it, or it's gonna be a bloody fucking mess. Once it's in, we don't even have to turn it on. It automatically starts draining, and you feel better. It's pretty painful going in, but don't you worry. We're gonna lube up that Foley like it's your first time, every time. That's right, motherfuckers. Welcome to the ER, where there's no tube we won't try to stick in you to help us help you. Tips from the ER, the Rapid Infuser. 
If you've ever experienced massive blood loss, either from a gunshot wound, a stab wound, or perhaps a vampire showed up and sucked the living juices out of you because you're a delicious looking motherfucker, you can always come on down to the ER. We have the one machine that's sure to save your life. It's called the Rapid Infuser. This baby will quickly warm up and pump fluids like blood and saline back into your body like a fire hose into a house fire. Okay, maybe it's not that strong, but it's pretty fast. Massive blood loss means we gotta get warm fluids into you ASAP or you're gonna go into shock and die. Also, without blood, your body temperature will drop to dangerously low levels where no amount of warm blankets will save you. But the Rapid Infuser will. This machine is pretty complicated, so let's hope if you're the one in need of it, we have the right staff members to set it up. I want to believe everyone knows how to operate it, but that's not always the case. Your best bet is just to avoid losing too much blood from stabbings, gunshots, and vampires.